Hi guys, if like me you're tired of losing lures in snags, you want to do something about it, well maybe there is. Uh, this is the lure retriever that I use, I've been using it for about four years now. It's gone through various different designs along the way. Uh, this is the one that I've been using for a year now, I, I don't think I can um, better this any more than it already is. This, uh, this is the one that we made yesterday in the garage, of course you've not seen that bit yet but that was in the past for me, so there we go. Well, that bit's coming up. Um, the video's split into a few different parts. Uh, first off, I'm gonna show you a few clips of when I've been fishing over the last few months. I've had the GoPro on the chest harness, and you'll see me actually retrieving lures from real, real, real snags as I've been fishing. Uh, you can see how effective it is. Uh, then we'll go into, into my garage. We'll make this actual lure retriever. I'll talk you through all the parts that you need, how I go about making it. The whole lot costs us maybe 10 pounds. So if you get one lure back, it will pay for itself. Uh, lures are not cheap. You can't afford to keep losing them in snags. 10, 15 pounds. I've got lures that are 30 pounds. Uh, you throw in them, pike live near snags. We know that. Uh, and it's a recipe for disaster. We've all lost lures. Uh, I've lost one lure in the last four years. It was a fire tiger squirrely burnt it was weighted beautifully it was one of my favorite lures got loads of pike on it and i got it stuck on a log in uh, in in a small dam that i was fishing it was the day that i didn't have the lure retriever with me that's typical isn't it what i should have done in hindsight was perhaps cut the braid tied it to a stick put it in the margins uh, gone home got my lure retriever and come back and got the lure back but i didn't do that i just kept pulling and pulling pulling and eventually uh, i pulled for a break 30 pound down the drain never mind lessons learnt so this video is going to be split into a few different parts like i said um, you're going to see some real life lure retrieving situations when i've been fishing then we'll make the lure then we'll come back here and um, talk about how i uh, how, how i use it um, the, the best way that i found to, to get lures back okay hope you enjoy Snag a hook, which I have done. There we go. Didn't actually snag a hook. Actually snag the uh, the snap on the end of the, the end of the lure. Yeah, the carrier bag. Wait, fuck all until they're in water. And they're about twenty fucking ton. Snags there. Don't want hook out. I just reshape that with the pliers. Not in horn it. Back hook. I have to remember that when I get on and replace that. Yeah, uh, snag there. I think it's that branch that's going out. All right, I might need you here. Just hold this rod for us, mate. Uh, no, it's uh, an eel. Eel. Oh, an eel. Well, just hold that. Don't, don't pull it, or I'm just going to get the. Just going to get the retriever on it. You can 
take that. Yeah, I know. It's tantalisingly close, isn't it? Right, let's just bring the end of the rod down a bit. That's it, hold it a little there. I thought I had it then. All the way down. There we go. So there's two parts to the lure retriever. You've got, this, you've got the pull handle and the actual retriever that goes down to the lure itself. Uh, the pull handle is just six inches or so of 15 millimeter copper pipe, just domestic piping. You can wrap your braid around this a few times and get a direct connection to your lure. You can gorge how much that you, you, you pull in, how much pressure you, you're actually on it, which can be difficult to do with a rod. Uh, a lot of the time you will get uh, you'll get the lures back just with the handle alone. Works for dead bait rigs, anything anything that's stuck. It stops, um, it obviously you wrap it around the handle half a dozen times or so until it's tight and you can use it as a handle. It's going to stop you cutting your fingers and your hands. Braid is like cheese wire when it's tight. So we, we don't want to be pulling braid. The actual lure retriever itself, the thing that you clip onto the line and it goes down. Uh, again, that's made of 15 millimetre copper pipe. Uh, I don't know how long this is. Let's just uh, just have a measure of that. It's about uh, 65 centimetres long, but I don't think it's crucial the the length that you that, that you're going to get. As long as it's got the weight enough to carry these chains down, that's what you need. This is the stop a stop cap. Uh, I've got several here. I've got. Uh, those guys that's into your plumbing, you'll know you get the Yorkshire fittings, which is or the, or the solder ring fittings. Inside there is a pre-placed solder ring. It does make soldering them on to the connections very easy. Uh, but we've got to remember that in this, this application, we don't need to be waterproof. This is not a plumbing application. This is just something else. I've bought some more for, for this build. This is a stop end. There's two pack of these from B&Q. Uh, Next part of the lure retriever is a loop at either end, a wire loop. It's got to be strong. Obviously, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on it. Um, you can use coat angle wire, I'd imagine. Uh, it's soft steel, so it is going to bend and it's also going to rust. I personally use a couple of bicycle spokes. These are stainless steel, so we're not going to get any rust. And they're very strong, 1.8 mil bicycle spokes. You can perhaps get these from a bike shop, 50 pence each. There's, there's two bicycle spokes inside here. There's this one, which connects the pull cord to, and it's folded over inside and it's twisted together, and it comes out of the stop cap into another loop with the chain on. So it is just one piece. There's nothing to come undone there, and the molten lead inside will mold itself around all the wraps of wire, really hold that securely. And the other bicycle spoke is used to make the line clip um, I'm not sure you can see this in close up, but you've only got to do a U YouTube search or a, a Google search of lure retrievers, and a lot of them use this design. It uh, it'll allow you to just clip it on on and off the line without having to tackle down using this string. It's a bit strong and braids better, but there we go. It slips up and down there, and it won't come off until you want it to. You've got to put it behind 
that loop and there and then it'll come off again so that is also a bicycle spoke and the chain uh, this is one meter of chain uh, it's from B&Q, you buy it off the reel. I've actually got some a little bit better. The, well, at the time, I could only get this, and it's it's quite... Uh, I'm not saying it's weak, but it's some of the links have misshapen where they've been pulled. I think that's just because it's a, a weaker chain. If, if I put this chain next to it, you can see it's, uh, it's a little bit stronger. It looks a bit more substantial. Let's just have a look at the wire thickness. Uh, the original is 2.2 millimetres and the new one, it was badged as 3 millimetres, so yeah, there we go. Yeah, 3.03, .03. so, so it's 3 millimetres, so it's that's 33% stronger if you like. If that's 2 mil and that was 3 mil. The width of the, the links is 11.82, so it's probably sold as 12 mil. Uh, and then the length of each link, 22.94, so 23, 23 mil. That's the kind of chain you want. No, it's got to be strong, but not too heavy. Uh, this is one meter from b and I'll get the receipt here. Let's have a look. How much did this cost me? It wasn't very much. Here we go. One meter of the short link chain steel, three millimeter, there you go, £2.84. And the pack of two end caps was £1.25. You only need one of those. And then we also need some copper pipe, which I think a lot of people has got knocking around, little bits and bobs in the toolbox, back of the shed, something like that. And a couple of bike spokes. And we're also gonna need something for heating the lead to melt the lead. Uh, I made this, uh, this is just uh, an, a small baked bean can, cleaned out, uh, put a pair of pliers, just put a little pouring lip in there and just riveted a little handle on there. I will be holding that with pliers as well because it does get very hot but you need, you need to melt the lead down so that you can so that we can pour it in once the uh, wire components are in place. So that's the parts that we need. Let's get on and get making. So we're going to cut two pieces of the 15 mil copper pipe. Uh, one of them is going to be the pull handle, which we're going to make 15 centimeters long. And the second part is going to be the lure retriever body. And we shall make that, uh, let's go for six centimeters. That should be long enough. Now, if you haven't got one of these, you need to get one of those. That's the plumber's mate. You can cut the pipe with uh, a hacksaw, but a plumber's mate, fantastic tool. Get my mark lined up into the middle of the plumber's mate. That will just snap in there. And then it's just a matter of twist. And there we go, as easy as that. Beautiful cuts, uh, hardly any burrs on, uh, really nice very easy tool to use and we'll go with the same again for the lure body just a couple of twists and there we go so the next part of the build we're going to uh, do the wire component that goes holds the chains and goes all the way through the retriever and then in the pull cord loop at the other end so we're going to make that bit first uh, this is the pull handle that we've just cut to side we finished it with that we don't need that anymore uh, this is my end cap and the, this is going to be the retriever body. Now, if you are frightened or cautious, you got your right to be cautious. If you're frightened of, of messing about with molten lead and soldering, and if you haven't got a blowtorch or, or et cetera, et cetera, you could quite easily make this, uh, you could super glue that on. You could perhaps fill that up with uh, lead shots and super glue or aerodite the end cap so that they didn't come out, give you some weight. You could also use some of the chemical metal putty that you can buy mix two parts together and it's quite like plasticine that could be filled up with that and when it uh, when the chemical metal goes off it sets like rock i imagine that would be fine too but i'm going to solder this on uh, but before i solder it on 
I have to make the wire, the through wire, the pull cord on the chain and attach the chains because you can see when it's soldered in place these parts need to be already fitted through a hole in the end cap which I can just drill through. So I'm going to make that wire loop twist and show you what that looks like when that's done. Just to explain about the chain lengths, but just before I do the uh, the wire that's going to go through the body and capture them, it's a meter of chain, and I found that if you split it into three equal lengths, then if I just pinch that join there and that one there, there's two links I've got there, and that's uh, two uh, three equal lengths. One of them you'll notice is joined, which is not a bad thing. I think it could find its way, go over the back of a lure and pull it off that way. So I don't bother separating it, I just leave it as one circular loop or one single strand. There we go. There we go, that's how it's going to fit when it's soldered. Before we get there, we've got to bend the pull cord end. So we'll just make a mark on here of where it comes to the top. The loop has got to come beyond there. So we'll do that and show you where we're at. There we go. that up pull the bottom end in that's going to be our pull cord that goes on there you don't really need to solder that end cap on you can see it's it, it's fairly secure as it is i'm sure once the uh, the molten lead's inside there it's gripping this central wire there'll be no way for it to come off anyway but, uh, but i'm going to do it just because i can i'm just going to clean up this end on the wire wheel flux it and just solder it in there There we go, a nice solder joint, we'll leave that to cool down. We're not bothered if it's waterproof or not, I'm not doing any plumbing. So we'll let that cool down and we'll come back and we'll then fit the line clip. So the next stage of the build is the line guide, which is another bicycle spoke. Um, it, it, we've got to, we're going to have to drill two holes in the lure retriever and the line guide will go into these two holes and will be fixed in place by the molten lead. It's, it's just a, 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 a double curl over uh, and the line will sit in there and it can be released as well so you don't need to tackle down or tackle up. It can just clip on, do its stuff and when you finish with it you can take it off the line, no knots or anything. Uh, again, it's a bicycle spoke, uh, it's a 1.8 millimeter bike spoke, stainless steel, so it's not gonna rust. Uh, one thing you have gotta do is the two loops where it slides down the line, if we'll just make that look like it's sliding down the line. These two loops here have got to be big enough to smoothly go over your wire trace and the swivel. So our mine are about a centimeter in diameter there. So we're gonna do the same thing for this one. Going to start off by bending the bicycle spoke into this letter N kind of shape. And we're gonna fix it probably about there and about there. So that will give us about the width of it. If we just measure that. Zero that. So it's gonna be about 30 centimeters. From this corner here to this corner here is going to be about 30 centimeters 30 millimeters rather 
30 millimeters. Let's do that first. There we go. Straighten it out a little bit. Yeah, it's, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's getting a little bit misshapen and bent. Uh, we'll do the final straightening up once it's fixed in place. So now we've got to do the leg curl over. This straight piece here is that. So we've got to hold uh, a big screwdriver in a vise and bend each leg over. So it does a complete circle. Just so it will capture the line without it coming off when you're using it. So we'll get on with that. Um, got to bear in mind as well how much it's going to stand off the lure retriever. Uh, we want it quite close to it. We don't want to be going into a snag and making it worse by getting this snagged as well. So we've got to bear in mind, we've got about a centimetre and a half after it's been looped over. So we'll go for about the same as that. And there we have it. straighten all this up after it's been fitted but that will work for now so how far are we going to have it standing off and we've got to decide now how far we're going to have it standing off the lure retriever once it's been fitted it's at about a centimetre and then we've got to allow enough in the legs to go inside the copper pipe and just have a little bit of a bend on them just so that the molten lead captures them and it's fixed in place. So I think if we go about the... What I'll do, I'll cut that off with a hacksaw and the same on the other side. So we've cut the tail pieces off. We don't need those anymore. This is what we're left with. Hope you can see that clearly. Uh, it's quite straightforward. It's just two circles bent into the wire and it will allow you to um, put clip it onto your braid or your monofilament. Uh, the line will run through the center. And when it's done, you can just bring it over the back piece and it'll come off again. Uh, it's quite simple. Hope you can see that. So we've got to fix this into place inside uh, the copper. So the two measuring dots, we're slightly off there, but I'm not too concerned about that. We'll just uh, make sure that I don't get confused with the markings. I'm going to mark two holes where we're going to drill. And we'll have them there. There we go, that fits in quite nicely. What we will be doing is putting a little bend on the end of the legs. Because there's nothing for the lead to grip to. So if we just went in straight, we filled it with the molten lead, uh, it could just pull straight out. So if we put a little bend in the end of the legs, it will give the lead some key for it to grip on. So we just need a just a little bend on the end, end of each leg. There we go. Now we, we might have to uh, just ease that bend a little bit just to allow it to get us through this central uh, twisted wire. We'll see how we go. It might, uh, it might go straight in. Oh, it does. Look at that. That could do with holding in position. On that left hand. Uh, I think we can manage with that actually.
tie. I've got enough lead in there. I'll probably do this, but I'll show you how I do the uh, get the lead. I get a uh, this. I think this is a four ounce carp lead. What I'm going to do is very carefully remove the powder coating. If you don't, once it gets heated, it's just going to fill the garage with black smoke. It's horrible. Probably poisonous as well. Mind you, so is the lead. So that will just peel off once you get it started. There we go. So we'll just drop that in. The, I'll just move the camera a little. The lure retriever's all ready, it's in position. It's, uh, it's ready for the lead to be poured into the end there. Just gonna get the position in just absolutely right before we pour it. Once we've poured it, it's too late. That'll be okay. Success. Always makes me very nervous using uh, molten lead. Now, believe me, the whole of that lure retriever is going to be extremely hot. There is no way that I'm going to uh, take it out of the vice even, put it onto the countertop. It's going to burn that. It's going to burn your hands. If you drop it on the floor, it's going to burn. You really do need a vice. So we're going to leave that to cool down and we'll come back to it and we'll straighten up the uh, the line guide through it. Got a couple of little drops of molten lead that's come through the hole at the bottom but uh, that's fine we can just pick those off. We'll come back to that in a second. There we go they've got this cooled down now. I've got a little bit of molten lead that's leaked through the bottom hole that's fine we can just pick that off. A little bit at the top there. There we go. Uh, the line clip actually, uh, it's it's pretty straight. Oop. Sorry about that. There we go. You can see they're nice and straight. Um, and that's basically it. So we've got a pull handle and our lure retriever. Uh, I'm going to clean this up on the wire wheel just to finish it off. There we go, we've got those cleaned off on the wire wheel. You don't really need to do that. I'll just write a cheeky message on here. Here we go. Now we've got to attach the retrieval cord. Um, you can see I, I use a, um, it's a crab line. It's a kiddies crab line that you get from the seaside. Um, there's several types that you can get, but this is the one with the orange propylene. Uh, it's like a plastic. It's immensely strong, it's really, really strong. Pretty light as well. So I use one of those. I've tied a figure of eight knot a few inches back from the end. I'll thread the end through there. And then with the figure of eight, I'll re-thread it. This is a knot I use as a climber. This is what the rope secures to a rock climber's harness. It's a re-threaded figure of eight, immensely strong. This is not gonna come undone. And there we go, and that's ready to go. So I'm going to take this into the garden now and we'll do a few simulations with it with uh, a few different lures. 
So just before we test out the lure retriever we've just built, I'm just going to have a quick word about the attachment point that I use to attach the lure to my wire trace. I like to use the Savage Gear needle egg snaps. I use them in the large size and they have a breaking strain of 50 kilos, which is over 100 pounds. You see the largest size there, they're not the actual size, it's not to scale, but the largest size there I've highlighted with a pink circle, a little protrusion. That's the closure gate. That little protrusion quite often catches on the lure retriever, which is uh, a great bonus. Um, I think Savage Gear are missing a trick because they could make that protrusion maybe uh, 10 mil long and they could bring out their own lure retriever. It will catch on that every time. But hey, um, also I like these because the other side of the gate, you can actually uh, unclip that as well. And by doing that, it allows you to remove the snap from the trace altogether. This way that if you've got your uh, your rubber sleeve in or your uh, heat shrink tube in that's over your crimps, if that's damaged, you can remove the egg snap, remove the old heat shrink, put new on and put the needle egg snap back. So the first lure to test out is a Savage Gear Jerkster, 11.5 centimeter. Uh, great little lures these are, and yeah, oh, nearly had it. Yes, it's come off there. So we'll have a look again in slow mo. Uh, you will see that the lure retriever catches that little snap that I was talking about, that little sticking out bit on the gate. I know it got come out of the snag. Uh, next up, we've got a Salmo slider. Uh, this is the 12 centimeter, the, the big ones. They, again, they're a great lure. And there we go, we pulled out. So we'll zoom up and go in slow mo again. See, my shrink tube's getting quite damaged there. I'm going to have to replace that. Uh, you see the retriever, it's grabbed the front hook and pulled out of the snack. So the next lure is a Savage Gear. Uh, again, this is a 3D hard eel. And grab the front hook, pull it straight out, no problem. Slow motion and zoomed up. There we go, the chains grab the front hook. And out it comes. Uh, next up, we've got a squirrely bird. This is the clown pattern. Uh, it's attached by its front hook. Uh, attachments by the front hooks. In, you get the front hook in the snag sometimes. It will shield it somewhat from the chains. But again, you'll see this. Now we zoomed up. It catches that little gate on the snap. And there it goes. And the last one we've got one of the little Selmo sliders. I think this is a 10 centimeter little pike pattern. And uh, looks like we grabbed the front hook there. Yeah, there we go. We grabbed the front hook and out she comes. So the lure retriever is in two parts. You've got the actual retriever itself that will send down the line to snag one of the hooks of the lure and be able to pull it out and pull for a straightener hook out. Um, and this, the other part is just nothing more than a handle. It's just a piece of 15 millimeter copper pipe. Uh, it's always in my, in, in my fishing bag, dead baiting bag. I use it for all sorts. Uh, most of the time you will get snags uh, you, you'll get a lure back from a snag if it's lilies or cabbages something like that something that will pull out I don't want to weaken uh, my trace I don't want to risk my rod so I'm not going to pull like that it, it fixable reels it can damage the reel uh, pulling pulling out it's not it's not good you need to get a direct line I'll leave that on free spool just put the clicker on and just leave that out of the way so I'm not going to stand on it. Here's my lure, it's straight down to a cabbage. We'll perhaps uh, switch to the head cam for this. What we're going to do is wrap it around the handle about a dozen times. 
like so I hope you can see that and it's going to give me a handle to pull and it's out already I can feel how much pressure I'm putting on the braid it's difficult to do it with a rod plus you have all rods uh, they're all different uh, uh, different test curves so each rod's going to be different do it with your hand it's always going to be the same you can feel it once you've got the lure popped out all of those wraps that you did on it you simply just pull them off no knots nothing there we go let's get the lure back and there we go it's a silver salmo slider in this case so we're going to get this snagged again uh, this time try and get it buried a little bit deeper and use the lure retriever to get it back okay so i've managed to get the lure snagged into the lilies again it's pretty fast in there so this time we're going to use the lure retriever to get it back so what i'll do first is put the clicker on the reel and go into free spool all the clicker will do, it will just stop the spool from overrunning, spilling off lots of line and causing you a tangle. So I'll swap it into my left hand and I want the braid in my right hand. There you go, and just pull a bit more off. That way I can put the rod completely out of the way rather than at my feet where it's gonna get trodden on and broken. So we'll get the handle. And like I showed you before, about a dozen times, and that will give me a nice direct, a direct link straight to that lure. And get the retriever. And I need to pull off enough of the retrieving cord to be able to reach all the way down to the lure. And we'll get the chains, the chains towards the lure and we'll clip the line clip over your braid like that and it will cable car all the way down you should feel it go over your trace which it has there i've just felt the first swivel yep backwards and forwards i can feel it quite clearly and it'll hit up against the lure then it's just a matter of jiggling you jiggle enough you'll feel the pull core come tight like that it's grabbed a hook or it's grabbed the uh, the, the Savage gear clip that's connecting the lure to the wire trace, it's grabbed that. So all I want to do now is just get a tight grip of that and give it a pull. And we should have one lure. There we go. And you can see there it's snagged onto those hooks. It's done its job nicely. So let's, let's take it back off. There we go. And that's the lure retriever, homemade. Um, but I really hope you make you one. Good to have. It will pay for itself with uh, one lure that you get back. It'll be a good project for lockdown version two, which starts tomorrow. Give you something to do and hopefully no more lost lures. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.